All right. Here's the last one that we'll do in uh, in this section. Uh, it's the the first sections of uh, of chapter five, and um, it's another juicy one. Okay. And so, like I mentioned before, when you've got a really juicy one, it can be good to get all the puzzle pieces down on the paper, um, on the, get all the puzzle pieces on the table before you try to put the put it together. But let's kind of pause. And again, and get our head around what's what's going on. We're pulling on this kind of crowbar thing, okay? And then there's three points of contact, C, B, and A. And a super important key word there uh, is, um, code word is smooth again, okay? So... Let's just see what that really implies. And so at A, because it's frictionless, it's smooth, again, there's no horizontal force available at A. So we are going to have our force here, A, we'll call that. And the same thing at B, because B is smooth, there's no horizontal effort at the point of contact. And we've got that right there. Now, let's get to C. So with C, again, there's no friction. And that means we don't have any lateral forces available. So no forces that will be, no force components that will be parallel to the crowbar. So that means we don't have anything like this in that direction there. And so... At C, oh, what did I just do? I don't know what I just did. Come back. There we go. Okay. At C, then what we've got is right here like this. Okay. So you can see A has only a Y component. B is only a Y component. C is going to have both X and Y components. Okay. And so let's go ahead and write down what that might look like. So if we talk about a CX, it's going to be C something, C times something. And um, so we can say, well, what what is that something going to be? Well, here, okay, that, this angle is 30 degrees, so that angle is 30 degrees. So this angle right here is 60 degrees. Let me see if I can write a 60 in here. There we go. So that's 60, okay? So we did an alternate interior angle thing. So I drew this horizontal line here. And so we went 30, 30. Uh, this is a 90 degree angle. So our angle of interest there is 60. Okay. So, um, you know, pause and study that. Make sure the, uh, that geometry uh, works in your head. Get that figured out. Okay. Before you go on. Okay. But now that we know that, okay, we can say that CX is going to be C times the cosine of 60. And CY will be C times the sine of 60. Okay, we got that. All right, um, now let's go ahead and uh, break out F. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna call this guy F. So we want it in vector formats, so we know in a Cartesian format, so we know how to work with Fx and Fy, okay? So they tell us it's 30 degrees, but that's 30 degrees to the bar. Okay. 30 degrees to the bar. And so, okay. This angle here is also 30 degrees. Okay. Um, how do we get that? Well, let's make a triangle here. Okay. Then we know we've got 30 degrees on this end. That makes this 60, and we've got a 90-degree angle here. Boom, boom. So I'm left with my 30-degree angle right there, 
Okay. All right. And so study that if you want to, if you want to, cause I got to get rid of some of this stuff cause that has gotten messy in a hurry. Okay. Boom. There we go. Okay. And, um, so let me simplify what I just tried to derive for you, which is that this angle here is 60 degrees. Okay. And so what that does for us then is it tells us that FX is going to be 250, negative 250, uh, yeah, sine 60 degrees. And FY is going to be negative 250 cosine 60 degrees. Just like that. Okay. All right. Now, um, we might as well do the math on that. And, and when you do that, what you end up getting is that the uh, X component is minus uh, 216.51 to carry out, to hold on to lots of digits there. 216.51. And the other one is minus 125. Okay, just like that. Okay, so now we've broken down, uh, we've examined our support forces, and we've looked at the externality, okay, the force F. And so now we're ready to get into using our FX, FY, and MX equation. Okay, so come over here with FX, and what we're going to have is we're going to have that X component of F, which was uh, minus 216, 51. All right. And then um, the only other X that we have is the CX, just like that. And so we can see that CX is going to have to be 216. 51. Okay, there we go. And then if it were necessary, um, and it, it will be, it will be necessary. We could use that to figure out our value of uh, C. Okay, hint, hint. Okay, let's scoot over. Woo, let's scoot over to um, our Y components. And now we've got the FY, and that's down at 125. And our CY is up. And B is up. And A is down. Okay. So I've got one of those situations again where... Um, I've got multiple unknowns. Okay, I don't know B. I don't know A. Okay. CY, I can know because thankfully I've got CX. CX is going to lead me to C. So then I got CY. Okay. So let's go now to our moment. And the most important thing we got to figure out when we do our moment is where are we going to put the pivot? Okay. And in this one, there's, there's no like, there's no point to put the pivot at which it's going to magically make everything nice and straightforward. All right. We're going to have a little bit more geometry to work out on this thing, no matter what we do. Okay. Um, now we do have one of these cases though, where see the force C, whoops, let me, you can't see it. The force C is perpendicular. Okay. Uh, it's perpendicular to the rod. And so it might be convenient to put our pivot in such a way as to take advantage of the fact that C is perpendicular there. Okay. Now let me get rid of a few things on my diagram that have made it a little bit messy. There we go. 
Okay. Because what, we, what we're going to want to do, okay, I, I don't want to say this is the best place to put it because I, I don't think that there is a best place, but I'm going to choose to put my pivot here at B. Okay. Now, when you're thinking about pivot points, um, and then this is just good with problem solving in general, you can't always see in your head how things are going to play out. Okay. You just got to try it. Okay. You just got to try it. Um, you know, for example, I wrote a book a few years ago. It's a fiction book and, and I'd be trying to figure out what I needed a character to do. And I, I couldn't really figure it. And so I'd write something down. And once I saw it written down, I was like, okay, that works. Or I was like, oh my God, that's a bunch of crap. Okay. And then I'd have to try something different. So it's the same kind of thing, okay? You just, you got to pick a direction and go with it because you can't always see what's ahead, all right? So don't feel paralyzed if you can't see it far enough ahead to know what you ought to do. Just put your, pick a point, put your head down and go with it and see how it works out. If it doesn't work out, you try something different, okay? That's just the way it goes. Okay, um... So we got our pivot point B, and um, so let's go ahead and deal with F, our moment from F, um, which is going to be pretty easy. The moment arm is 0.6. Okay, and I have to do a lot of back and forth. It's going to be a little awkward. I apologize for that. But So we're going to have points. Whoa, whoa, whoa. that's going to make it even worse. Okay. Okay, so we're going to have 0.6, and then it's going to be the magnitude of the force, which is 250, and then it's um, times the cosine of 30 degrees. Okay, so that's going to get us this perpendicular component right there. Okay, so 0.2 plus 0.4, that gets us our 0.6, okay? All right, now let's get to C. All right, C is up there at a distance of 0.2, okay? And um, F is a positive moment, okay? So it's trying to come around here clockwise or counterclockwise. C is going to be the opposite direction counterclockwise. So those have to have opposite signs. So I want to put minus 0.2 times C, okay? Now, the thing that I have left to deal with is, uh, is A, okay? And the way we're going to deal with A is we got to think about the line of action for A comes straight down here. And so what we need is we need this distance right here. Okay, now we know this is a 30 degree angle inside here. I don't know if I can make it big enough to write in there. Okay, there's our 30 degree angle and it's 0.15. So this blue side down here, it's the opposite of our 30 degree angle. So that means that the blue side in there is going to be the hypotenuse 0.15 times the sine of 30 degrees. Okay, if that's our moment arm then for the force A. Okay, so let me shrink that up, screw things around. And um, it's also clockwise, so that means it's uh, going to be negative. Okay, so we got minus, we're going to have 0 0.15 sine of 30 degrees. That's our moment arm times the magnitude of A is equal to zero. Okay, there we go. Okay, now the physics is done. The engineering analysis side of things is finished. What we have now is an algebra problem. And again, I'm not going to go through that. Okay, it would, you know, it, it would take me a lot longer to do it on video for you than you could do it. Uh, on paper by yourself, but I'll sketch it for you just in case. Um, uh, so like I said a little bit ago, since we've got CX, that's going to lead us to get C. 
Okay. And so we're going to be able to get CY when we need that. We're going to need that down here. Okay. So there's our C, which means that we can, whoops, which means that we can use all that information to get the value for A. Once we have the value for A, we could plug it down in here. And finally, we can solve for B. Okay. So again, C gets us to CX, CX is, and that gets, sorry, I said that backwards. CX gets us to C, C gets us to CY, C gets us to A, A gets us to B. Okay. Uh, anyway, just chase that thing down. Uh, it's not so bad. Get it all written down. It'll be fine. Okay. Uh, all right. There we go. So that is uh, basically the first half of chapter five. Oops.